Hello, and welcome to Zanata Consulting's beginner series. This one is focusing on CRM. And today we're going to talk about user profiles and permissions. I'm Brett Martin from Zanata Consulting. And I'm Tyler Colt. And with that, let's jump right in. So um, first thing we're going to want to do to actually get to the profile and role settings is jump into the general settings here in the top right. And then under users and control, they kind of have all of these nestled under this security control tab. So we'll go ahead and open that up next. And so the first we'll kind of just break down what each of these sections are and what types of permissions you're controlling inside of each of them. Um, so profiles are most easily described as what a user can do. Can they delete a certain type of record? Can they edit a record? Can they write a script or a function within the CRM? Um, you know, any of those like action-based permissions. Can they download stuff? Can they do mass deletes? All of mm -hmm. those kind of things that you Can may you want to export data. Yeah. Exactly. And when you look at those kind of things, you know, a lot of companies, you'll have 15 or 20 of these mm -hmm. <laughs> with very granular based permissions. So it comes with the two out of the box, administrator and standard. Mm -hmm. And you also, when you create a new profile, you can clone off of an existing one as well, which makes yeah. it uh, pretty nice. And we always recommend doing that. The standard profile here that comes out of the box with the CRM is way too close to administrator. And we'll dive into that in just a moment here and actually creating some of those. Um, but so the, the next little section up at the top that's important to understand are roles. So roles are driven kind of like an org chart or based on the hierarchy of your company. And they pertain mostly to controlling which records somebody can see inside of a module. So for a lot of people, they don't want any sales reps to see other people's deals or accounts. So the roles are kind of where you would go to set up the hierarchy of who can see other people's records and who should just be able to see their own um, within the CRM. And then lastly here, we do have data sharing settings. Um, these are kind of specific to each of the uh, modules that you have in your CRM. Um, we'll cover these real quick now because they're pretty straightforward. So the main thing that you need to know is up at the top here under default organization permissions. These are where you're setting your default permissions for each module. So if I look at leads here and I have that set to private, that means that by default, people are only going to see their own records as well as records owned by people below them in the role hierarchy. And so because of that setup, you know, oftentimes you do actually want these to be private because a manager is still going to be able to see the records owned by a subordinate user inside the CRM. Now, if you did want to go ahead and change that, like maybe accounts should be public, you can go ahead and click one of those and choose if people should be able to see other people's stuff or see and edit other people's stuff based on those sharing permissions. Now, the last little section down here at the bottom is for if you need things that are a little bit out of the box. Um, that aren't based on some of those normal rules. So if I wanted to make like a one-off rule that said that anything owned by the CEO should be shared specifically to managers, then I could come into the data sharing settings and actually make some of those updates and create my own custom rules. So now we've kind of covered the basics of each of these modules, what I'll do is work my way back across here and kind of walk through how to create new roles and then how to create new profiles. So again, keeping in mind that roles are based on a hierarchy, oftentimes you'll want to set up more than these basic ones that come with the CRM. And so to do that, let's say we had a CEO and maybe we wanted to have a kind of general manager. Oops. And then lastly, maybe we wanted to have some additional people underneath this general manager. So what I could go ahead and do is I could actually create a new subordinate role using the little plus button here. And maybe I want to create one for a sales representative. Now, there's one little checkbox here that we'll want to cover real quick. Um, this basically is a checkbox to share data with peers. So sometimes you might want to say that if a uh, account or a deal is owned by the sales team, 
you want anybody else in the sales team to be able to see that record. So if you did want to share across that particular role, you could go ahead and enable this box. And that also would apply to the general manager. You had the same option when you set up the general manager. So maybe you had, you know, regional managers instead and, you know, wanted all the regional managers to see all the other regional manager stuff and everything that rolled up to them. So you basically have those, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to kind of hone it down that way. Exactly. Or a common use case that we'll see is maybe you have some people that are sales and you want to keep them private, but then at a certain point, things transfer over to customer service. And maybe you want to say in the world of customer service, we're not competing over accounts. So we're willing to just share all of those out once they've been handed off and are now owned by a customer service employee. So you find that within here, though it is a pretty simple little setup um, to get going, you actually do get a lot of granularity in terms of showing and hiding records based on both of the data sharing settings and your role hierarchy. Yeah, I think the most detailed one I set up was I think they had something like 37 different offices that mm -hmm. were around the country. And so where you had CEO instead of general manager, you had the office and then you had the people associated with that office. So every yep. single one of these roles was directly related to an office. The offices couldn't see each other's stuff, but the salespeople in the office could, and it would all roll up. You can go yep. really deep with this and get kind of complicated as to what people can and can't see and edit. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, and so the last one here that we want to dive into are profiles, and these, these are pretty different than your roles and data sharing settings. Um, so out of the box, like Brett mentioned, you're going to have this administrator profile. One little extra note about the administrator profile is that people assigned to this supersede roles or data sharing settings. If you're assigned to this administrator role, you can see everything in the CRM by default, and it doesn't matter what role you're set up as. Now, the other profile here is their system standard profile. So if we were to go ahead and open this up, we can kind of take a look at some of the permissions here. So, you know, you, of course, you're going to cover your basic permissions. And so you'll see by default, this standard profile can view, create, edit, and delete leads. Uh, this is one of those cases where for us, generally speaking, I would say a standard user should not be able to delete things. Right, they could always loop in a manager if they think that a lead is junk or you know shouldn't exist. Or maybe you want to say, hey, let's let them get rid of junk leads on their own. But once something is a contact, an account, and a deal, now we don't want those things to be deleted, right? Because they can be marked closed dead or they can be marked inactive, but we want to keep that record because they've been qualified and converted into these modules. Running down the page here, some of the other permissions that are covered um, you know, are things like, should they be able to import export? Should they be able to send emails or mass emails? Can they mass update records, mass delete, change ownership of things, convert leads, um, as well as you know, doing any of your admin permissions. So you know, can I change my own permissions? Can I you know, add fields to modules, right? And all these various different um, tools. And it's important to note, you don't have to necessarily scroll down the entire page. You actually, on the left-hand side, you can jump to any section. So if you're looking to do something, you can just kind of quickly jump to that section. Yep. Um, the one thing that we'll notice here is that um, a lot of these can't be edited. And that's because this is the system standard profile. So oftentimes what we'll do, um, because a lot of these things, in our opinion, should be turned off for just a normal user, they don't need to be able to mass delete anything or export any data, we'll often create a cloned version of this and work from that to create something like a sales profile. And so I'll go ahead and do that now. And we can run through some of these settings and kind of go through some best practices of things that we definitely would want to turn off in a normal instance. So there's a lot of these different modules up here at the top. You can actually go ahead and turn them off as a whole for a particular um, profile. Uh, in this case, we'll leave these on here, but you'd likely want to go through and turn off the ability to delete most of these things. You know, maybe they can delete their own tasks if they're not necessary, but you know, nine times out of 10, a normal user doesn't need to delete most records. Um, as we kind of go down, you know, of course, you're going to want to turn off import and export. Um, if you have someone who's on the sales team and maybe you want to turn on import, 
But in that case, you would definitely want to turn it off for most modules, unless you had a particular reason to let them import things. The reason for that is if someone were to import a large batch of really bad data, um, it just becomes kind of a pain to clean that back out. So you do want to control those things. Um, and it's very yeah, easy to do a bad import. It is. It's um, very easy to do a bad do import. A, and as part of this tutorial series, we're actually going to talk about imports on a future video. Yep. Um, of course, we want to turn off export, right? There's really no reason that a salesperson should be able to export a bunch of leads and walk out the door with that spreadsheet. Um, now getting into some more specific permissions, you likely want to allow people to send mail. You might actually not want people to send mass emails. You only have about a thousand of those a day that can go out. So I have seen a lot of companies that'll turn this off for a normal salesperson and only a sales manager can send a big batch email at request of a particular rep. You don't really want people to delete emails, so we can turn that off. Um, mail merge is a pretty good one to leave on. You're probably going to have people generating documents and things like that through the CRM. So there's not a big fear there. Getting into the tool permissions, you probably don't want to let people delete. You don't really want people to change ownership. If you've assigned them a record and they're just a salesperson, um, a sales manager can change that over for them. You'll notice sometimes as we disable certain features, others will automatically disable. That's because if they can't change the owner for one record, surely they can't do it for many. Um, here on the rest of these, we'll keep them as is. One nice thing here as well is that under this setup permissions, you can just turn all of these off and then selectively turn them on. We generally recommend doing that because a salesperson should not be able to create an automated email sequence or things like that. Um, you can have those go very awry. So I'll go ahead and turn all of these off at first. There are a couple that you're going to want to have on. Um, things like email and chat settings. These basically will allow them to turn on their email integration or BCC the CRM to add emails that way. Um, other than that, though, most of these, they're really not going to need. These are things like automation, setting up web forms, viewing your import history. Um, you might want to enable things like Zia if they will, if they wanted to use data enrichment or prediction or image validation. These don't really do much harm. Now, last year at the bottom, uh, you get kind of permissions around extensions that you have. Um, so in this case, we'll leave these on for this, but you can control if somebody wants to, you know, work with projects, set a thing up on the phone bridge, work with estimates, invoices, purchase orders, any of your finance records. Um, Google, you actually do want to make sure with uh, Google and Microsoft that you control these. You might not want them to pull everything into a Google account. Maybe you do, that's all good, but you can choose those settings here. And then lastly, for basically everybody but the super admin, the developer permissions should be off. You do not need anyone to have API access under their just normal user permissions. And so that there's kind of just a quick walkthrough of exactly what can be done within profiles. <clears throat> like Brett mentioned, you can have many, many, many of these uh, for different people inside your company because they do control access and permissions to a wide variety of different uh, aspects of the CRM. Thank you so much for watching us today. Yeah, and of course, if you did find this video useful, uh, please be sure to subscribe down below so that you see future videos that we put out and give us a like because that really helps our channel get seen by more and more viewers like you. Thanks again for watching.